Hello everybody, Calamity here, and I'm still stuck in the green ranks. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite editor-in-chief, Yaimiko. We're going to go over everything you need to know about this character, from her talents, weapon options, artifacts, constellations, team setups, and of course, we're going to use her in the Spiral Abyss and do a little bit of a showcase with her. In fact, she's actually a really good character to use in the current iteration of the Spiral Abyss. More on that later. We have quite a lot to go over, so let's get started. Yaimiko is a off-field DPS character. She can be used in a lot of different teams. Whether you want to just use her as a straight-up off-field DPS character or to set up your aggravates for a Dendro DPS character like, say, uh, Tainari or uh, Al Haytham, she's great for those. Uh, but before we talk more about teams, let's actually talk about what our favorite Shrine Maiden does. So the first talent we have here is just the regular normal attack talent. It's called Spirit Fox Sin Eater. And just like the name suggests, it is just a normal attack talent. No fancy gimmicks or mechanics here. She is just going to do a normal three hit combo um, and has a, a little bit of an interesting uh, charge attack. But this isn't really something you're going to use. This is not where her damage comes from. And just also a quick reminder that she is a catalyst user, so she will be doing electro damage and this damage cannot be converted into any other element. Now let's talk about the good stuff. The real deal when it comes to Yaimiko's kit, and that's gonna be her skill. It's called Ikan Evocation Sesho Sakura. That's a long name. Now it's also quite a explanation, but here we go. Yaimiko summons these fox totems that will periodically strike your enemies and deal electro damage. She can use her skill up to three times and as long as these three fox totems, is what I'm going to call them from now on, are in a close proximity to each other, they will actually empower themselves. Now I should have some, you know, a little bit of a infographic showing up on the screen here, showing you that there is a beam that connects them uh, when they're getting powered up from each other. And you can actually tell what level of upgrade the totem is at based on the number of marks that you see hovering around each totem. Now let's take a look at the skill attributes here. As you can see, they start to do more damage once they accumulate more levels. So just a level one totem by itself is only gonna do 109.2% damage multiplier. Keep in mind this is at level 10. And as you get more levels, it goes to 36, 136.5. Level three is 170.6. And here's a bit of a oof from Hoyo versus part here. You might be looking at that level four and thinking, hey, how do I get level four? I got bad news for you. It's one of our constellations. So if you are deciding to just be a free to play or just a low investment Yaimiko and you're only going to keep her at C0, level three is what you should be looking at uh, for your max damage output with her elemental skill. I should also point out that although the skill multiplier looks pretty low, that remember that you've summoned up to three of these and they are attacking for a quite a long duration and multiple times at that. So it might look low, but the damage, you know, when you add it all up after the duration of each totem is done, it's a lot of damage, just to say the least. Uh, each totem lasts for 14 seconds and the cooldown is only four. But remember, it's four times per totem, not four times and you get all three back. So just keep that in mind. That's how it works. Other things about the talent, uh, excuse me, the skill is that you don't have to do anything once you summon the totems. So just make sure you summon them in a close proximity. I like to just do like a triangle formation when I uh, summon the totems. Uh, this makes it so that they're all level 3. And they will automatically target nearby uh, enemies for you. You don't have to like command them um, when it comes to targeting an enemy. They'll just do their own thing. You can uh, you know, set them and forget them is what I like to say. Just make sure to remember that they need to be close to each other. Don't try to space them out too far. Otherwise, you won't see that beam that connects them so that they can be empowered and deal more damage. Last but not least in the active abilities kit of hers is her burst. It's called Great Secret Art Tenko Kenshin. This is also a pretty straightforward burst. It's going to do a big lightning bolt, thunder, a lightning strike, excuse me. And it's going to do, of course, some AOE electro damage. This burst will continue to attack multiple times for each active fox totem you have on the field. So if you have all three, this thing will actually hit up to four times. If we take a look at the skill attributes, you have the regular skill damage, and then what you have is the Tenko Thunderbolt damage. This is 
the thunderbolts that are uh, created when you sacrifice your totems. And you can, as you can see at level 9, the Tenko Thunderbolts do a bit more damage than the regular initial hit. So you always want to make sure you have the maximum amount of totems out for Yaimiko so that you can uh, get the most out of your burst damage. Also keep in mind that this burst is expensive. Holy moly, it has a 90 cost. That is one of the most expensive bursts in the game. It rivals that of characters like Raiden Shogun. So energy recharge on this character is going to be definitely a priority for those that want to use that burst more often. Another thing to keep in mind about this burst is that this burst does not track your enemies. So when you're about to cast your burst, quick tip for you is to make sure that you cast it when you know that your opponent isn't going to move, teleport, or do any sort of mobility for the next few seconds. Because if it moves out of the range of the AoE of this burst, that's going to be a lot of wasted uh, damage uh, from your burst there and that's definitely not something you want so just keep that in mind that the strikes will only hit the same spot uh, multiple times and will not move around and that's pretty much Yamiko's kit it's very easy and straightforward compared to a lot of the characters so when it comes to leveling up her talent you can completely neglect the normal attack talent if you so choose and heavily focus on the elemental skill definitely being the bigger priority here and then her elemental burst second next up we have her passive talents we can go through these pretty quickly the first one's called the shrine's sacred shade this is going to reset the cooldown of your elemental skill for one second for each totem that gets consumed when you use her burst so essentially if you use all three totems for her burst you will uh, you will reset the cooldown for your elemental skill basically it will be ready to go again so you cast three totems cast her burst have those totems get consumed and by the time they're consumed you should have yaimiko's elemental skill ready to summon three more totems yet again and they'll be ready to go and you can swap to whoever you want to uh, to continue on your rotation next up is enlightened blessing this is also straightforward it's going to make it so that every point of elemental mastery that yaimiko has will increase the damage of her elemental skill only by 0.15%. So obviously that seems pretty low, but it's not hard to get a lot of elemental mastery, especially, you know, not just from her weapon options or from her artifacts, but you can use other characters that buff elemental mastery like Nahida, like Sucrose, uh, and a bunch of other characters that can do that as well. So keep that in mind. And last but not least, we have Meditations of Ayako. This is going to make it so that you get a 25% chance to get one regional character talent material, excluding the base material when you craft, and the rarity will be that of the base material you're crafting. So it's a nice little different uh, crafting passive talent. Feel free to use it uh, if you feel like you need it. Next up, let's talk weapons for Yaimiko. This is pretty straightforward uh, since she is a DPS character, so that automatically takes out a lot of the support type weapons, like the Sacrificial Fragments, for example. Don't really need that, or Favonius Codex. Now, obviously, when it comes to 5-star options, if you can get her uh, signature weapon, if you're going all out for her banner, get it. It's a really good weapon for her. Um, but also, if you get any of the other standard 5-star uh, Catalyst weapons, I have one of them. Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds is good. Skyward Atlas is really good. Gives a bunch of attack. Uh, things like that. Any like DPS oriented 5 star catalysts are going to be great for Yaimiko. So just keep that in mind when choosing an option. You're probably not here to listen to me uh, list off a bunch of 5 star expensive options, right? You want to know, hey, I'm free to play or a low spender. What else can I get? Good news is you can give her the Widsith. This is probably one of the best 4 star options available to you, uh, especially if you can get to Refinement 5. I mean, I don't really spend a lot on weapon banners, but just over time playing Genshin so much, I've done so many copies of the Widsith that I don't think getting a Refinement 5 uh, Widsith is, you know, too crazy uh, to to require of a character these days. But let's talk about the weapon real fast. It does have a substat of crit damage, a nice chunk of crit damage to, uh, to add to that. And also, when the character, Yaimiko in this case, takes the field, you will get one of the th uh, three following effects. You will either get a straight attack increase of 120%, elemental damage increase of 96%, or an elemental mastery increase of 480%. So basically, for Yamiko's case, this just means 
much more damage when she takes the field for the first 10 seconds. And remember that this weapon has a cooldown of 30. So during that 10 seconds, believe it or not, the Witsith can actually outperform several of the 5-star options, assuming you also have them at Refinement 1 for the 5-star weapons. So this weapon is really, really good, really, really strong, and I re recommend it uh, for your Yaimiko. Now, if you're looking for other 4-star options, uh, maybe you don't have a Witsith, that's okay. Uh, I can recommend the... I can recommend a Mopamare. This is uh, not as good as a Witsith, but it's, you know, better than nothing. We can turn that Elemental Mastery subset into more damage. And Yaimika will get a little bit of an, a damage boost to her elemental skill and burst uh, when she triggers a elemental reaction, which should be all the time because those uh, totems be hidden fairly frequently. Really quickly, over here on the Battle Pass uh, menu, if you did buy a Battle Pass either recently or you know way in the past and you have a Solar Pearl, I can recommend this weapon for Yaimiko. It's pretty good. Just make sure you use some normal attacks in, in her rotation to activate weapons effect here to get more elemental skill and elemental burst damage. Going back to four star options here, I can recommend the best free to play weapon I can recommend to you is going to be the Hakushin Ring. This is the weapon you can craft in Inazuma. You're going to have to do uh, some world quests to unlock it if you don't have so yet, but once you've once you've done the quest, you should get the recipe uh, or the, the formula or whatever that you turn into the blacksmith and you should be able to craft this weapon. I'm going to move on now to her artifacts. Now you might be seeing I have the Gilded Dreams set on my Yaimiko and that is because I do use her primarily these days in an aggravate team. However, you do have plenty of options to choose from when it comes to picking an artifact set for your Yaimiko your Yaimiko, depending on what team you want to put her on. So let's actually use this little in-game graphic to let you know what everyone else is using. And wow, it's actually kind of a surprise to me. Uh, the number one used set for Yaimiko is going to be the Gilded Dream set. Now this is a set that gives you a bunch of elemental mastery, which is really, really good for aggravate teams because it increases the potency of the effect of aggravate, meaning your enemies will take even more damage. But if you don't plan to use Yaimiko in a Gilded Dream set, uh, you can give her the Golden Troop set. This one just straight up increases your elemental skill damage by a lot. Um, and if you're wondering why the percentage is kind of low for this set, it's most likely because a lot of people have farmed a Gilded Dream set or even uh, a, like another set like an Emblem of Severed Fate or this whatever this combination 3 is. And honestly, they're probably like lazy or they don't want to farm for a new set for Yaimiko, which is... You know, that's, that's totally fair. Farming artifacts is never a fun process. So it's up to you on what you want to go for. If you're going Aggravate, definitely recommend the Guild of Dreams. If just using her as an off-field DPS, then definitely the Golden Troop. Another set that's actually not listed on here, but I will recommend is the Emblem of Severed Fate. As we talked about earlier in her kit, she has one of the most expensive burst costs in the game. So, you know, getting energy recharge is definitely um, a good priority to have for Yaimiko and... Well, the Emblem of Severed Fate gives you a free 20% energy recharge and turns some of your energy recharge into extra damage. Uh, specifically for her burst, which might not be the best, but it, you know, it's, it is it is free energy recharge. So um, you could also do the combination three here if you want to, the Gladiator's Finale and Thundering Fury, or two piece Emblem of Severed Fate if you want to throw that in there as well. But Regardless of what you choose to go for, what kind of subsets are you looking for? And to be honest, it's a lot. Yaimiko is a DPS, so we want all of the DPS associated sets. Things like crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, elemental mastery, especially if you're doing aggravate. If you're in aggravate, elemental mastery has a bit of a higher priority uh, than attack percentage. Um, energy recharge, of course, as we just got done talking about. And honestly, that should be enough to fill out your substats for a lot of your artifacts. So let's talk about main stats for your uh, artifacts here, and it's going to be pretty straightforward-ish uh, when it comes to the sands and the circlet and the, and the goblet, of course. So let's go ahead and go to the sands here. And if we do look at the recommended affixes, we can see, well, a large portion of you did go for attack percentage. I'm guessing your energy recharge needs were met, um, or you're just more, you're comfortable with how often Yaimiko is bursting, the frequency of her bursts. Now, not everyone needs to burst off cooldown with Yaimiko. Some of the players that are using like the Golden Troop set, for example, maybe you just need the skill damage and you don't really care about bursting. Uh, that's totally fair. So that's probably why energy recharge as a main set is so low, but you can go energy recharge as a main set if you do feel like your energy recharge needs aren't being met and you're bursting not as frequently as you'd like. Elemental Mastery as a main set, also gonna be okay here, especially for Aggravate. Once again, 
having trouble deciding between, you know, like attack percentage, element mastery, uh, just go with the one that has the better substats and you should be fine. Next up, let's talk about the goblet. This one is also pretty straightforward. Electro damage bonus. Uh, attack percentage or elemental mastery is going to be okay early on. Uh, you know, if you don't have a good electro damage bonus goblet, it's totally fine. Definitely try to replace it later on. Last but not least, the circlet. We have crit damage, crit rate. This is all going to depend on how your substats roll, what weapon you gave Yaimiko, things like that. So if you're not happy with, you know, either the crit rate or damage, try to get the main stat you need more of. Next up, let's talk about consolations for Yaimiko. The first one is going to be Yakan Offering. This is going to make it so that when your burst activates an additional thunderbolt you will gain eight elemental energy for herself uh so keep that in mind this is not count that first initial hit remember we saw the skill damage and then the tenko thunderbolt damage it's only the tenko thunderbolts that are going to give you the additional uh, energy so that means you can only get 24 energy from this constellation that does help significantly with yaimiko's energy recharge needs for sure c2 is fox's moon call this is gonna make it so that your totems now start at level two when they are created and can now reach a maximum of level four so back then when i said hey that's messed up that they show you the level four damage multipliers well this is how you reach it yep you gotta get a c2 yaimiko in order to get to that level 4 totem. And in addition to that, their attacks range is increased by 60%. Uh, this makes it this makes a huge difference. You can basically auto battle. It's the closest thing we can get to auto battle in Genshin Impact is by summoning your totems and you know just pull out Farina and have a nice seat on your bubble and you know eat some cake while your totems do all the work. C3 and C5 are gonna increase her skill and burst respectively. Now, of course, getting plus three levels to your skill. It's going to be a nice damage increase as well as your burst, so not much to say there. C4 is going to make it so that when your elemental skill hits opponents, the electro damage bonus of all nearby party members is going to be increased by 20% for 5 seconds. This does include Yaimiko, and I say this because it, does, it doesn't say otherwise. Last but not least is Forbidden Art de Sesho. I don't know if I said that right. This will make it so that your totems ignore 60% that's right, 60% of your opponent's defense. So big, big damage increase overall um, for your elemental skills specifically. And next up, let's talk about teams for Yaimiko. Now, as I said before, she is fantastic for any aggravate teams that you want to set up or spread uh, teams if you're going for a more Dendro DPS route. So this is what a Dendro team would look like if you wanted to use her with Raiden Shogun. Of course, a lot of these characters are interchangeable. So for example, you don't have Raiden Shogun, then Kachin could be your Electro DPS, or Sinnoh could be your Electro DPS, uh, can be replaced with Shogun if you don't have her. Nahida, same thing, she is the best Dendro player in the game, and if you didn't get her on the last banner, sorry to hear that. But you could also use Dendro Traveler, Kali, uh, etc, etc, or even Yao Yao if you got her for free from the Lantern Rite Festival. Speaking of Yao Yao, she's also replaceable as well if you have Kirara, or any of the other characters I mentioned previously. Uh, you can use them as well instead if you don't want to use Yao Yao. Up to you. Here's another example, but with a spread team. So Tignari is the main DPS. Nahida to apply more Dendro. Yaimiko to apply more Electro. Story, I'm going to go ahead and just say is a underappreciated or I guess underrated support for Yaimiko. If you don't have a uh, Raiden Shogun, remember that uh, Dory can funnel energy to a character with her burst. So that can help you a lot with alleviating your energy recharge needs for Yaimiko. And of course, just same as before, if you don't have Tignari, you don't use Tignari, then Alhaitham can be your main Dendro DPS, or even Nahida if you've built her in such a way that she can be a spread DPS and then you can use her with Yaimiko if you so choose. Dory also gonna be, uh, you know, changeable as well if you wanna use a different healer, different support, um, uh, definitely all up to you. Now, next up is going to be an overloaded team if you have Chevreus, if you were able to pull for her uh, in the previous banners. You can definitely use her with Yaimiko and get lots of overcharged damage. Now, I don't have her, so that's why I have a bunch of blank spots here. And then use whomever, you know, Pyro or Electro characters you want uh, in combination to get your frequent overcharges and get big, big damage. So, totally up to you. Um, I just have Jean Ling here as a easy example. Now, this isn't necessarily a team um, exactly I'm trying to recommend to you here, but rather 
don't forget that Yamiko is Electro and you can do Superconduct with her. Super Superconduct uh, characters are perfect for physical DPS characters like Eula, Razor, or even Jin Yan if you're building her in that way. And because of Yaimiko's frequent Electro application, you should be able to get plenty of Superconducts all the time. Welcome to the end of the guide. You've made it. And I should have some Spiral Abyss background footage in the background. Uh, with a Yaimiko team being used, if you want to see her in combat. Now, I'll just briefly talk about the Spiral Abyss, because I did mention at the beginning that Yaimiko is great for this Spiral Abyss uh, iteration. I've seen a lot of people on like Twitter and Reddit complain about a lot of the bosses uh, in the Spiral Abyss, and it's totally valid. I totally understand the criticisms of, hey, the you know, fighting things like the, the Wii Newt, super annoying because it's you know it digs underground a lot of the time and you can't even damage it i get it like yeah it's totally frustrating now characters like yaimiko are perfect for this boss because the totems target for you you don't have to do anything and they will track the target even as they're airborne and continue to do damage to them so yaimiko is perfect for the ruin serpent for the wee newt and even for the Aeon uh, Blight Drake uh, boss, if you're having trouble with that, I don't, I don't, th I think that boss is like easier compared to the other two, since you can attack it all the time. Um, so definitely not a challenge at all. If you are struggling in the Spiral Abyss and you want a character that can easily damage all three of the bosses at any given point, Yaimiko definitely going to be the perfect character for that. That being said, I think Yaimiko is definitely a solid character overall. If I were to put her on a tier list, I would put her in either high B or like a solid A, depending how you want to build her. Now, I think she's perfect for aggravate teams because, again, the constant electro application, not to mention her own personal damage. Uh, she definitely out damages Fischl, at least a pre C6 Fischl, uh, because Fischl actually does a lot of damage as well because C6 allows her to attack with your main DPS. But Yaimiko is going to be out damaging Oz because there's three totems going off at once, not to mention her burst does do uh, a respectable amount of damage as well especially if you sacrifice the maximum amount of totems really really big numbers are going to come from the elemental burst and she's also very again very easy to play very easy to understand there's no complex combos no mechanics that are you know long Yu-Gi-Oh card descriptions it's just plant the totems preferably in like a triangle position and you know, let them do the rest and then pop the burst if you uh, if it's up. If not, swap to your next character and that's pretty much the gist of it. As I said before, she has a great team versatility. I'm using a ton of teams. She is not picky with her teammates at all. Some things that you should take note though is that Yaimiko actually has a pretty low base HP. She's very squishy, like a fox. Just like the fox that she is. So be very careful if you're playing her without a shield or a really solid healer because if she does take, you know, you know even a lot of hits that you would consider safe could be very lethal for Yaimiko if she ends up getting hit. But thankfully, that's why she's an off-field DPS. She moves around as she casts her elemental skill. She does like a little dash. So that can help you evade some uh, attacks and, and prevent you from taking damage. So just kind of be careful with uh, your Yaimikos out there when she's on the field. At least give her a shield so you can at least feel safe um, while you're placing your fox totems. And with that being said, I do think this is a solid spot to end this guide here. Uh, if you do have any additional questions about Yaimiko, if there's something I didn't explain well enough, uh, if you're wondering if, you know, can I use Yaimiko with this and that character, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. I'll do my best to try to answer you and, and help you out as best as I can. You know, I'm not exactly the the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable Yaimiko main, but I'll try my best. Um, and with that being said, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of content, I do plan on making more. I hope all of you guys have good luck with Yaimiko's banner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. リツリオ。ナンコフラク。張り取りなさい。チョック。見えないだろ。はい。よっ。岩山発掘。私の家にいらっしゃい。姿を残す。15。チョック。目くれます。え。音が聞こえる。
天理直